On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, we find another front engine dragster in the woods, except this one's cut in half, and we're left to wonder exactly how it got there. Before I get too carried away, I wanna invite you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you like what you see, leave me a comment. Anything you can do to interact with me helps my channel, obviously helps me to interact with you and know what you wanna see. If you wanna see more of this type of dragging dragsters out of the woods and piecing them back together, hit the subscribe button because we got a lot more of that kind of stuff coming up soon. So I've mentioned before that I'm always looking on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for local drag cars and parts and hot rods and stuff like that. And this one actually came to us. You know, we've kind of been known locally to collect this junk. And so that means people bring it to us or they tell us about junk that they found. In this case, I got another lead from Michael Brandt. He actually has given me quite a few leads in the past, and this was a good one. This was one of those things he was exploring at a junkyard nearby and just happened to see this dragster chassis kind of tucked away in a place where most people couldn't see it. And just as luck would have it, he found it and told me about it. And of course, I went to go find it and buy it. The junkyard that this dragster was in belongs to Elmer Earls. And I'd heard of this guy, he's got a company called Hippie Beads, and he makes all kinds of cool stuff. But he's also got this junkyard in his backyard. And this thing was sitting in between a Ford F100 pickup and a 63 Impala Supersport two-door hardtop. So it was really kind of cool to spot this thing because, uh, I mean, who would have ever guessed that a dragster would be cut into and just kind of stuffed into the crack between two junk cars. My dad and I were pretty excited to see this thing. We started climbing and digging and clawing, trying to get the two pieces of the dragster out of its hole and get it out into the clearing where we could kind of piece it together and just take a look at what we're getting. So as it turned out, we didn't have any problem loading this junk into the back of my S10 truck. It fit right in. We put a little strap around the tailgate and we were good to go. So that's a pretty easy way to haul a dragster. If you just cut it in two, you can put it in pretty much any truck. And as sort of a bonus, I didn't realize this was part of the deal, Elmer actually had the rear end out of this car, which was a cut down 55 through 57 Chevy rear end. Of course, it didn't have the chunk or anything like that, but the housing itself, a narrowed housing with the plates and everything where this thing would just bolt right in, that was cool to me. That was getting us one step closer to putting this thing up on wheels so that it kind of looked like something. Elmer didn't know a whole lot about this thing. The only thing that he knew was that when the guy brought it to him, he had already cut it in half. And his reasoning behind that was that he didn't want somebody else to get their hands on this thing and to put a motor on it and go kill themselves. So his remedy for that was cutting it in two and that would discourage anyone from actually trying to put this thing together. Of course, that didn't discourage us. That was the very first thing we did. We got it home, put it in the garage, stared at it for just a minute, and then put the two pieces together. My dad welded them up just with the MIG welder. You know, we didn't do anything to make this thing strong. We just wanted it to sit up right and sit up on wheels. So if we were ever actually put a motor in this thing, we would wanna strengthen that a little bit. But for now, it's just butt welded with a MIG welder, and that's good enough. From the looks of the mounts, this thing had a Chevrolet engine in it. Who knows? I mean, there, there's very limited information on this car. I don't know any of the history aside from the guy cut it in two. That's really about it. So, you know, I'm just having to discover things as I'm looking at it. One of the things that really had me scratching my head was that the rear section of the frame, right where it was cut, had a larger size tubing than the front section of the frame. And that leads me to believe that at some point in its life, this thing had either been in an accident or it was being updated to a little more modern standard by lengthening the chassis. So at some point in its life, it had had the front of the chassis cut off and a new section welded on. The rear section of the frame is a little bit sketchy. Actually, you can see the threads on one of those bars and that tells you that that's water pipe. I mean, that's they're threaded on the end. so. You know, to see that, it kind of tells you the, kind of the, what the rest of the chassis is made out of, and then that worries you a little bit. But again, we're not ever going to drive this thing. This is static display only. 
But the front section of the chassis is really nice, really good welds, small tubing. It has a torsion bar, front suspension setup, which again is a little questionable only because of the way that the link bars are made. It's really not a good design. It's got a cutout axle. They used to do that to lighten the axle up. This would have been just a solid cast iron beam. And instead of that, they would cut the middle part out of there to save you know, a few pounds off the nose, which is always helpful. When we bought it, it didn't have any spindles or front tires or wheels, didn't have any rear tires or wheels. So we just kind of pieced together what we could find. We found some 17 inch wire wheels. They're like a motorcycle wheel. Uh, we found those as swap meet for real cheap. The tires are junk, but again, we just want to make this thing roll. We stuck the rear end back under it, which was just a few bolts and we were done. Stuck a set of steel wheels and slicks on there just for the time being. It really wasn't correct for the car. It was more of a super stock type slick. And uh, you know, we put that on there temporarily and we found a really cool pair of slicks, which I did a video on previously. They're a set of recapped slicks that were made here locally in Inglewood, Tennessee. So just given the era that they were built and the era that this car would have ran, it really kind of makes sense that these tires would be on this car. So we bolted them on there. Thank goodness for those Tri-5 and that Corvette wheel because it's the right bolt pattern. Stuck them on there and it looks perfect. One thing I noticed that was a little odd was that it has a Volkswagen steering box on it and the shaft actually goes out the right side of the car, which on normally on dragsters it goes out the left side but for whatever reason, this car's got it going out the opposite side. I do like the fact that it still has the steering wheel on it, the old butterfly style steering wheel, and it has wood grain on it, which the wood is obviously rotten and about to completely fall off of there, but still cool that it's hanging on by a thread. Now, back in the 60s, dragsters basically grew by about 10 inches every year. Every year, somebody would stretch their car out and it would make it handle better. So that just created kind of a tidal wave of new dragster chassis being built with a longer wheelbase. So, you know, those early to mid 60s, those cars were consistently growing by 10 inches every year. This one with the wheelbase that it has, it just tells me that mid 60s is probably a good guess. Of course, the rear section of the frame with that larger tubing, there's a few clues there. And that larger tubing is a clue that this was an earlier chassis and I would be willing to bet money that this thing was much shorter in wheelbase. Probably more like a 100 inch wheelbase, which would have been late 50s, early 60s. So based on the wheelbase of this car, I'm guessing that the front half modification of the chassis was probably done somewhere between 1963 and 1965. So what are we gonna do with this thing? I mean, it is just a piece of junk. There's no doubt about it. I'm not gonna hide it. This thing is rough. There's nothing that we could ever do to fix it, but we still enjoy it. We still like having this stuff around. And our plan with this thing is slowly, it's probably at the very bottom of our project list, but to slowly add some things to it. Maybe stick an empty engine block on it and some cylinder heads and an old intake or something like that, just to kind of make this thing look the part. Maybe piece a few other things together, stick a some tin work in there for a seat, something like that to make this car look more complete. But for right now, it's not hurting anything sitting there. So, you know, it's just a good conversation piece as of right now. Uh, who's to say what we'll do with it five or 10 years down the road once we get some of our other projects kind of uh, wrapped up. But by then I'm sure we'll have new projects and this will continue to just be on the back burner and it'll just continue to be a yard ornament for us. You know, it's nothing special. I actually still haven't figured out the history on this car. I've dug like crazy locally and outside of our local area to try to find something with a roll cage that looks like this, with a frame design that looks like this, and I'm just coming up empty. So for right now, it's just a conversation piece. It's just a yard ornament. It's just a cool piece of old school drag racing history. You know, I want to go back to Elmer's and show off some of his stuff, especially out in the junkyard. I didn't really get a chance to really roam around because the drag strip was really pretty close to where you pull in at his place. So we didn't have to venture very far to find this thing. 
And now I want to go back and venture a little bit to check out all the other stuff in there.